We are approaching the end of a DraftKings $555 best ball tournament, $1 million to first place, and we got off to a hot start. Have hit one injury in camp so far, but we don't have to worry about that. It's a player you probably would have guessed would have gotten hurt, and a player who we debated very seriously in the sixth round. So make sure you go watch that video, but we're going to try to land the plane here rounds 13, 14, 15, 16. We're discussing some of our later round picks as we close out this $500 best ball tournament en route to a million dollars. And we'll talk through exactly how we landed on some of our final picks here leading in to the last couple rounds of this draft. Let's do it. All right, guys, despite a Kadarius Tony injury already, which is the least surprising thing I think I've ever heard in the history of best ball, uh, I'm still extremely excited for this team, and we are nearing the end of this DraftKings $555 best ball tournament. If you want to get the kind of intro to how the tournament is structured, which leads into some of the conversation that we'll probably have here today, being very top heavy, being, you know, a higher stakes tournament, being the advancements are a little bit um, easier, I guess would be the word that I would use. That has driven a lot of the conversation that that we've been having. We got lucky again, go back and watch probably every video where it gets gets referenced. We got Tyree Kill at the the 108, assuming everything's OK with him, uh, you know, uh, uh, legally and, and, and all of that. Um, Really excited about that. Garrett Wilson, I guess, also uh, suffered an injury literally today in training camp, but hopefully he's okay. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, we're six weeks away from the season. Super, super excited for this team. And today we're going to talk through uh, a few, a couple different turns here at at the end of this draft, some of which were pretty straightforward, some of which all four of us almost couldn't decide <laughs> between a, a couple of players, which we'll get to in, in a second. And some of which we had, you know, some – some pretty uh, intense debate on behind the scenes. So we'll get into all of that, but really quickly, I want to walk through the team up until this point. And I just lost my place in discord that had our team screen shot um, through. Well, nope. That's old through 12 rounds. Correct. Eli Mitchell was our 12th was the 12th round. So it was the 12th yep. round selection. Um, Silas, you, you, why don't you go ahead and read off through 12 rounds, and that'll hit us into uh, round 13 here. Yeah, so first round at pick eight, we took Tyreek Hill, uh, came back around, grabbed Garrett Wilson. At the 3-8, we grabbed Brees Hall. Uh, Debo Samuel fell to the 4-5, we took him. Um, then we got a, a 14-pickish fall um, for Justin Fields. Followed that up with Kadarius Toney, Darren Waller, uh, Jahan Dotson, uh, Tua Tagovailoa to stack with Tyreek, AJ Dillon, Rashad Penny, Elijah Mitchell. God, that is so beautiful. Um, so where we stand now, obviously Silas read the team heading in to round 13. We are pretty flexible. Um, we don't really need a quarterback, of course, having spent on Justin Fields and, and Tua. But ultimately, it's it's pretty wide open to us. I know some people would say your running backs suck, but I think we're actually um, feeling pretty good about our running backs. And uh, the wide receivers, of course, we started out really, really strong uh, through the first you know seven or eight, nine rounds. So with that being said, this is what led us into, I wouldn't say our most difficult debate because it actually didn't end up being really that difficult of a debate. But I think we're in this pocket where it happens a lot of the time where you are flexible. We've done a good job of structuring our team and kind of letting the room give it right. We're, we're, we're kind of doing all these different things. The room has given us a lot of the best player available. We've scooped up value, what we structured our team really well, but now we're in this pocket of the draft where the wide receivers are, um, not amazing, <laughs> not not totally amazing, but there are some guys who made sense for our team in particular one and some running backs that are enticing, but don't don't really have, you know, any firm role to start the season and frankly might not have any, any real role. They could be zeros for a lot of the whole season. So we're in this kind of funny part of the draft. Um, 
which led us into ultimately a debate of uh, Donovan Peoples Jones. Uh, I'll pull, I can pull up here my screen and then we'll get to Silas's screen share here in just a second. Um, here were the running backs that were available when we are on the clock here. And so you see a couple of the starred guys that we uh, particularly discussed, Dante Foreman, Kendra Miller, Devin Singletary, Jerome Ford, Ty J Spears being some of the best available running backs here at wide receiver. We had Rashi Rice, Isaiah Hodgins, DJ Chark, Alec. Nope, this is wrong. This was a one pick later. Put put Donovan Peoples Jones at the top of this, <laughs> the top of this list, which is a, a little bit spoiling the news. But put DPJ at the top there, and then tight end. There wasn't anything that really ultimately we considered just yet, which we'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, when we add DPJ to this list, I'll kick it over to Bernie, and that was one of the first guys that got thrown out here. I do think it was. Uh, DPJ is a player I'm like kind of only so, so on. Um, I think he was okay last year. I don't hate his archetype and I definitely don't hate betting on the Browns. We have Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. So having a Brown as a week 17 bring back makes a lot of sense. Mention that we're flexible right between positions. And then the other thing that ultimately kind of led us down this road here to me was the fact that there's a quite a few different running backs, right? That could have landed back to us in the 14th round that we're, we're interested in between Foreman, Kendra, Ford, right? Ty J Spears, et cetera. I think a lot of these guys can make sense. And we had some of our preferences that we debated, but also I think the fact that there was a bunch of them was what led us kind of down the wide receiver path. But Bernie, what were you kind of uh, thinking about this turn? So here coming in, we're at a two, four, five, one. And I basically was thinking, hey, what's there at running back wide receiver? The tight end wasn't anything we were really interested. Tight end Laporta was the only guy we talked about really at all here. And we just felt like there was so much of a drop off at running back and tight and wide receiver that maybe we don't need to spend that tight end bullet with Waller already on the team. I leaned wide receiver in this spot. Uh, our primary considerations were DPJ and Alec Pierce. I was leaning wide receiver for exactly what you just explained to Eric. We're sitting here. We're going to have a pick in about seven picks after this one. And these are the running backs on the board. Not all of these guys are going to go in the next seven picks. It was very likely that any of Kendra Ford or Tajay were coming back to us. So I leaned wide receiver. And then I was very much DPJ over Alec Pierce. There is a bit more of a steadiness per se with DPJ. He got almost a hundred targets last year. He's in an offense that everyone's anticipating to pass more and be a little bit more faster paced to also bring the pass rate up. So we can maybe get a DPJ at like a minimum of 80 targets, maximum 120 targets, some type of tolerance in there. So I lean DPJ and he also did kind of fit nicely with our jets build. Trev. Yeah, I was the other guy on DPJ as my like number one. And I thought his archetype of he was just that deep threat guy who we already had a stacked five receivers to start. We had Dotson, Tony, Debo, Tyreek, and Wilson. So I didn't care too much about the floor when we're looking at this guy. And you know, my my comp uh was he can be shitty MVS, you know, he doesn't have the homes <laughs> back there. That's but, really bad, by the way. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. But God, like he can make some he big might, plays. He might be better though. He might actually just be better than than the MBS or or the the same, right? So, yeah. but your point is your point is true. Yeah, but you know he can he can have the spike weeks, and I was really thinking, you know, that's the type of play you want if we have a shootout in week seventeen. You know, one big play it speeds up the game. Jets are throwing the ball more. You know, so I think overall he was just a really good fit, and I figured with Kendra has the out tag, or at least he had it at the time. Uh, Ford was like 14 picks past our pick. We had Taija there. So I was comfortable with a lot of the running backs. And I just figured let's get this guy who fits what we need with like being able to have spike weeks. And also we have the correlation and I thought it was just a perfect spot for him. And then Silas, ultimately we did kind of all decide our top two players were DPJ and Kendra Miller. And we didn't really <laughs> have a strong um, way to break the tie, but we went, I'm going to kind of, push us past we did decide to take dpj there at the first pick you know with this 13 
14 turn. And then it comes back around to hear what you're seeing on the screen. So we kind of committed to that wide receiver and Kendra was our top choice, but then we come back around here. Did you have any reservations after we, you know, we did really like Kendra, but of course Kendra is, you know, still not practicing, not, not fully healthy. The Alvin, I've been drafting a lot of Kendra and frankly, I, you know, I still am, but he is really falling, which is another reason we did not take him. Um, but did you kind of have any change of thoughts, any reservations after we take DPJ, all these running backs are still here. And I think a lot of these guys make sense a lot. Like most of these guys, frankly, on this whole screen, maybe other than Zeke are pretty good picks. So, um, what was kind of your thought process knowing now we, we kind of committed ourselves to a running back here. Um, were you just like totally Kendra here or, or build out more Browns with Ford or what were you just kind of thinking at this spot in the 14th round? Yeah, so the last, so I'll, I'll just kind of say this. So the last round, I was thinking about Ford because I wanted one of the Browns guys as a bring back off our Jets. Yeah. Um, once we took DPJ, it kind of took Ford out of consideration for me. Um, and I'll, I'll preference to the viewers that we actually did go down to a coin flip um, because we literally <laughs> were two and two and couldn't make a decision. So we literally flipped it. Uh, it turned out to be heads and DPJ. Um, and at that point, you know, with our running back room being Brees Hall, A.J. Dillon, Rashad Penny, and Elijah Mitchell, we expect all of them to have, you know, hefty, if not, you know, pretty sizable week one roles. Um, you know, this is where I was kind of saying we should go for upside. Um, you know, Kendra could literally be a zero, literally from week one and the all season pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's already Kamara. Kamara's suspension isn't expected to be as significant as it was, you know, as it was a, a month ago. Um they did sign Jamal Williams to kind of be that high volume goal line touch guy. Um, and Kendry's a you know, round three, round four rookie. So, you know, not, the team doesn't love him. Um, but, you know, they already do have two running backs that they're already pretty much committed to in a committee. So he kind of has to show something in those first two weeks if he even has a week one role uh, to prove that he should maintain a role throughout um, and kind of needs an injury to kind of go from there. Um, but he's a 225 pound guy that runs, you know, kind of like Alvin Kamara uh, and has hands that are soft as hell. So he has the upside to be a true three down workhorse back. Um, so that's where I was saying we, we expect the, op the, the Saints offense to take a step forward this year. Um, so why not shoot for upside? I totally agree. And that's ultimately where I started pushing for Kendry. I do really like Jerome Ford. I would not have had any reservations, which we'll get to later on someone like Ty J. even like, I know it's a big reach by ADP, but even down to, you know, a, a Jeff Wilson with Miami or something, build out a little bit more of the dolphin stuff. I think all the, all these guys make a lot of sense, but when, again, going back to what we said at the top where look, almost 40% of this prize pool <laughs> is going to, to first place. We're trying to play for a million. Of course, we want it. You got to advance. You got to do all that kind of stuff. But we haven't done anything up until this point at, at running back specifically that is like killing our advance rate. You know, we have a, a decent stable of backs and they do have they have it's a good combination of, you know, A.J. Dillon's going to have a role. Eli Mitchell's going to get the football. Is it going to be five times or 12 times, you know, in week one? I don't know. But, you know, CMC is not going to play every single snap. Those kinds of things. I, I Rashad Penny go back and watch that video. We can all talk about that. And spoiler alert, he did get the first carry with the Eagles first team offense. I know that's a funny meme too, but swinging for upside, both in this running back room that we're putting together, we've already started to do that a little bit, right? With some of these particular archetypes, but kind of the combination of players that we put together, a Jerome Ford is a home run swing as well. A home run swing who needs an injury. Quite frankly, he needs Nick Chubb to go down. Right. Ty J Spears, I like, but to really be a smash needs Derrick Henry to go down. Right. Dante Foreman could technically take over the, the Bears running back role, but I think he probably needs two injuries. Like he, he could be the lead guy, but to be a stone cold smash, right. He's probably going to need two injuries. And even then like Travis Homer's probably playing passing downs, you know, it doesn't mean he's not valuable. I draft him too, but the one guy who could just show up and be awesome and take kind of take a lead of a backfield, right? Like you said, he shows up, Alvin Kamara is not playing the first couple of weeks. And we don't know if that's even going to happen, but Jamal Williams is a role player, kind of a hammer, a goal line back. Jamal Williams is never going to be the guy getting 25 carries. Frankly, Alvin Kamara at his kind of a little bit more advanced age, declining skill set, is kind of a weapon 
he's not going to be that every down back, right? He's going to be probably pretty good for them in the receiving game. But if there's one guy that could come out and just be this awesome runner and kind of lead in a committee and like league winner, like I think of, I don't know, like Damian Pierce last year, right? It was like not assumed that he was going to be some lead and he never became a true workhorse, but he took command of a backfield because he was really good. And if there's one guy that could do that on an offense, I'm really excited for. And I think it was Kendra here. And so um, he really, really stood out. Did you guys have any, we did ultimately kind of snap call Kendra, but Trev, did you have any other reservations um, here? And then we'll get into our 15th and 16th round picks. Uh, I think at the time I was Ford uh, as my number one guy. And it was more of just, if Chubb goes down, you know, it doesn't matter that we have, four players in that one week 17 game you know he's paying off his cost if he is the handcuff that we're drafting him as Mm -hmm. um and it was really just more of like a offense thing uh where i'm like okay that offense is really good and he only has one guy in front of him rather than two and even if we don't think jamal williams is all that much the saints still went out they paid him he's gonna have playing time he's gonna get carries so it was more of like i think it's easier for him to become the workhorse but kendra definitely has that upside where you know, he could really ball out and show that he's the guy. I think Ford had like, what, two carries last year and played some special teams. Yeah. It's like, it's a, we don't know the Browns are absolutely in love with him and there are still free agents out there. So I think Kendra just made sense at the end of the day. Bernie, what do you think? Yeah, I was very much just Kendra here because we really needed that running back with the wide receiver in the round prior. But we had considered briefly – okay, well, do we do DPJ and then Alec Pierce? And Alec Pierce is still available at this pick. And then Hammer running back going home. And we just decided that Kendra coming all the way back around to us was too good to pass. I I do think before we head to the next turn that we're going to talk through, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because something that is easy to to miss in the conversation, especially doing some uh, retroactive discussion like we're doing here is – we're, we're a lot of these picks are of course made based on who we have selected, who we like the most that's on on the board, right? But we're also planning ahead and thinking about what our end structure is going to look like, who we might be targeting later, right? And you know who. Uh, so you mentioned Laporta. I really really like Laporta. He's actually one of my highest uh, owned tight ends. There's no real rhyme or reason to why we would draft him from a correlation perspective. We don't have any Lions. We don't have any Cowboys. We, you know. We don't have anything like that, but we just like him. And so he was somebody that got mentioned, but there were some other players a little bit later at the tight end position that also made sense for us, uh, in particular, someone who we selected that we will get to. And you mentioned Alec Pierce, where we're thinking ahead to, okay, there, there might be some running back kind of flyer-ish type guys that we like a little bit later. And we're really interested in this Colts and Raiders thing. And I, and people be like, what the hell are you talking about? Colts and Raiders? Well, they play each other in week 17 and there's a bunch of options on both teams that are available kind of from now to the end. Alec Pierce, Josh Downs, Jelani Woods, Zamir White, uh, Michael Meyer, Hunter Renfro. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of these guys that are, that are available on both of those teams. Uh, the, the Colts, you know, whoever ends up being the Colts backup running back to JT, I think when we were talking this through, you know, there was JT concerns, you know, even there, you know, there's still concerns about all these early running backs. So we were planning. That's why Alec Pierce, you bringing him up was really good because we could have double tapped wide receiver here and started to plan ahead. But I think ultimately we had Josh Downs in our back pocket. If we want to do the Colts thing, we do have a bunch of different Colts options and we definitely have, you know, Zamir White, Michael Meyer, Etc. available to us later from a Raiders perspective that I think just made Kendra kind of stand out a little bit above the rest. Um, do we want to just pull up the draft board and start to, I'll pull up, I can pull up Silas's draft board and you'll be able to see who we selected here in the 15th and, and, uh, and 16th rounds. And we can just start to kind of work our way down there. We can see who was available, who wasn't, who went in between our picks and how we continued to build out this team. If you can zoom in just, a little bit. So there we are picking out of the eight. The eight it's all right. The eight spot. My, mine has been uh, extremely slow as of late. Shout out to work trying to do this on work computer. So you see um, 
Donovan Peoples Jones there selected after Eli Mitchell and then Kendra Miller. And part of the discussion that we just had was with those running backs and why we took DPJ, also why we considered Alec Pierce's, you know, some of those guys might get back to us. And multiple of them did actually. <laughs> Ty J Spears was available uh, in the 15th round. Jeff Wilson was available in the 15th round. And, you know, Leonard Fournette, not my cup of tea, but there were a couple running backs there. Chuba went right before us, who I do also like Chuba Hubbard. Whereas those wide receivers that we talked about, you can kind of see down the board and see who we picked there. You know, Hunter Renfro, not off the board for a long time, right? I don't even think Josh Downs has gone off the board yet. Marvin Mims was still available, although I'm getting a little worried uh, about him. And even our good buddy Alec Pierce was on the board when it came back around to us. So it actually became a another discussion of an Alec Pierce versus Ty J Spears, you know, or something in, in that realm. Um, Bernie, you were pushing for Alec Pierce a little bit at the, at the last turn. And you clearly did not win an Alec Pierce argument here in the, in the 15th round, but just walk through what, what, you know, you would think about something like a Pierce versus Ty J right versus Jeff Wilson versus tight end versus uh, that in the 15th round on this team. I think it's just very clear that I hate running backs. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. So I was pushing for Alec Pierce above Tajay. I haven't super come around on Tajay. I just mostly seen the FUD on him. I don't know much about him just as a running back. So that uncertainty of just like who he is has led me away from him. Uh, ultimately, I was okay with the pick. He's the clear second running back in Tennessee. The third running back probably isn't going to be on their roster. It just made sense um, to lean in, grab another running back, get up to six running backs on this team, get another high upside player. I was cool with it. Uh, but Alec Pierce is a player I'm super invested in because I can just see someone torching the Raiders defense in a dome. Don't try to go on the limb with a lot of defenses saying they're going to suck, but that's one I feel confident in. Both of those defenses are probably going to are probably going to suck. So uh, in a dome in Week 17, I told you. I also I, I'm also like kind of an Alec Pierce stand as a player. Not like like this dude's going to be a superstar, but like this dude has a like he. I, we're talking about DPJ and MVS and stuff, like th- he has a better skill set for that role in my opinion. Than, than those guys do. Like if you put Alec Pierce on the Chiefs in the MVS role, like we would be drafting him much, much higher and very, very excited about it because I don't think he he sucks. And so um, it was definitely difficult for me uh, here at, at this spot. But Trev, what's your kind of Tajay versus Pierce versus the other guys that were on the board? Yeah, Pierce and Tajay were my two guys that I had one and two. And it's hard to have a lot of conviction at this point in the draft. It's like, do I want this third round rookie with no ACLs or a guy who <laughs> we don't know if his quarterback can throw the ball, but the quarterback couldn't throw the ball last year and he was okay. So it's, you know, there's, there's not a lot, but I just figured, you know, we had similar to the DPJ point. It was like, we have strong wide receivers already. And I think Tajay was kind of, he was in that tier with Kendra and all of them were like, okay, we see the handcuff value. If Henry goes down, we think it's a, okay offense especially with Hopkins signing we think Ken Hill's gonna play most of the season at least I do um so he was kind of I think he's a tier above Jeff Wilson Zamir White all those guys who went afterwards and I also saw you know I saw Mims there Pierce was there and there was there was a few guys that was like okay there's enough wide receivers left where I think maybe one of them gets back for our next pick and if not you know we had Meyer who we had talked about before and a few other guys. So I, I thought it was just end of a tier. Let's grab this guy and really try to solidify an RB room. Silas. Yeah. So I, pers- I so I was like Bernie. I, I I preferred Pierce here, but I was okay with Tajay. Um, and my my reasoning was more. You know, we grabbed Pierce here. I feel really solid about our wide receiver group. You know, we could probably stop at seven. Um, you know, we could take a couple of extra shots at running back late. Um, and then we'd also be able to do our mini with Meyer. So we kind of stop at two tight ends since we already have Waller. We all really liked Meyer. Um, it's that little mini correlation. And then Pierce is that spike weak player because he's kind of a deep threat on an offense that is kind of going to be reinvigorated. Um, we know Shane Steichen likes to kind of stretch the ball down the field. Alec Pierce is really good with the ball on his hands. 
Um, you know, he was kind of shifty at, at Cincinnati, and we really just haven't been able to see it because Matt Ryan was terrible last year. Um, so I was personally pushing for Pierce. I was okay with Tajay. That offense is going to be good. Um, Derrick Henry, obviously getting up there in age, has a ton of carries to his name. Hasn't really been hurt in the NFL. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, you're just you're asking grandfather clock to finally uh, strike midnight. Yeah, he did have the one what, what two years ago or whatever when he was just I remember I I was like full fading Derrick Henry two years ago and he's just absolutely burying me for what was it six or seven weeks or something like that. I mean, just I 30 eight. points. Yeah, yeah every yeah. single week and, and uh having to show up and do a show every week with zero percent Derrick Henry and all the RB bros making fun of you, but he did get hurt. Then he did get hurt. He broke his he broke his foot, which we found out recently. He still has a plate in his foot, apparently, uh, inside sources. That uh, so I'm not sure that he'll ever be fully healthy again. And with Tajay, it's it was for me. It was basically everything that that Trev said. I am excited about him as a player. I loved mm -hmm. watching him in college. He's really explosive, even without ACLs, which I don't actually know how the hell that works. Um, not a I am not a doctor, but that seems bizarre. But Hassan Haskins is, you know, if we're talking about legal troubles and stuff like that with Alvin Kamara, Hassan Haskins is actually um, going to be in trouble and probably not play in the NFL ever again. And you just have like Julius Chestnut back there. Tajay can kind of play in the passing game as well as he, he's he's a, a good runner. And we've seen even with Derrick Henry being amazing, like for his the course of his career, he did, again, he doesn't play every snap. We see these other pass catching specialists come in or backups come in and like post a little bit of standalone value not amazing but for a you know 15 16th round pick like th they're they're gonna poke they're gonna he's gonna make our lineup probably a, a couple of times even with derrick henry and then if something happens to derrick henry i mean it is total wheels up he's a league winner um so i think it was that cut off there's just not that guy left after him like i like jeff wilson i know some people like lenny Right. I like we'll get to Zamir a little bit later. I like Zamir. I like Ty Chandler and all that kind of stuff. But there's not that guy where it's like, yep, starter goes down. This dude is a league winner for sure. And we know it. Um, and so I think just that kind of played in over Pierce. And there, you know, there's a tiny little chance Pierce got back to us and we were really, really close. We were really, really close to getting Pierce coming back to us. Obviously, we took Ty J and Pierce goes right before us in the 16th round. And I think this one was the easiest one out of all of these picks here, given where we sit with just Darren Waller at tight end. I think we all really like this player individually and a uh, big tier break, like at every other position, ginormous tier break. I don't think these running backs or wide receivers are all any better than the other position. Whereas I do think Michael Meyer is a good clip better than a lot of these other tight ends. He fits what we were talking about with some of the little fun Colts and Raiders things you can do at the end of the draft. So I'll just kind of open it up. Um, Meyer was kind of like a slam dunk. Even in our chat, we've had a lot of conversation about every other pick. And that one was pretty much just like, yeah, I like Meyer. Does anybody have anything they want to add on him? Yeah, I think I brought up Knox for a second. I was like, we should consider that. Maybe we do something with New England delay. And it was just like, I, I they were so like, one of those things where I think it's pretty similar situations. Knox, you're playing on efficiency. Meyer, you're saying... Well, they don't have another tight end. They have what OJ Howard and Austin Hooper. Come on. <laughs> and it's just Devontae a receiver other than and I guess and, Renfro and And might not be Devontae for much longer. Yeah, uh, exactly. We're, we're already getting the trade rumors. Yeah. So I, I think it's easy to see a scenario where he's just out there almost every snap, just running routes and Jimmy G's just throwing him the ball. So I I had no arguments with that, especially on full PPR. I did also pump up Knox and Parker as a combo potentially. Um, but at the end of the day, the upside just really was there with Meyer, especially going towards the end of the season. And Parker didn't get back to us anyways. So i have been pretty <laughs> bummed if I was like, hey, let's do this, guys. And then it totally fell flat on our face. Yep. And we're staring at like Tyquan Thornton and Kendrick Hunter Bourne. Henry. And it's just yeah. like, those don't have the same pizzazz. Um, fun ACL story. I did once a, upon a time, eight years or so ago, at being a stubborn individual, tear my ACL and walk around for nine months before I went to the doctor. <laughs> that's that's oh. insane. 
Well, while we're telling ACL stories, not me, I'm too big of a coward for that, for sure. Um, there was a, when I was in high school, my sophomore year of high school, our girls basketball team was like awesome. Like, it's like ranked in state, like state championship contender. Our point, our, our point, senior point guard, she went and played in college and stuff like that. She tore her ACL over the summer and she played the whole season on the torn ACL. And I, I still don't really know how that's physically even possible. Like hearing you just say you walked around with it and she's playing competitive basketball yeah. on, on a torn ACL. So apparently you can do a lot more without these ACLs than I think we're talking about a NFL running back and, you know, Bernie getting up from his couch and walking to the kitchen and, and, you know, a bunch of fine, fine, finely tuned athletes uh, without ACLs. Um, one thing I do want to add for Meyer is he was pretty much the last one that I felt comfortable with only going to tight end. Um, you know, he, he, That's a good even point. though he is a rookie tight end and, you know, rookie tight ends don't really do anything year one. Like meyer has been talked about as like a generational tight end in terms of what he did at Notre Dame. Like, he was a pretty damn good pass catcher and their entire passing offense was circulated through him. Um, you know, Joshua Daniel loves his tight ends. We saw it a tiny bit with Darren Waller, although he was hurt most of the year. Um, obviously, Gronk, Aaron Hernandez, um, you know, Martellus Bennett as well. He it kind of fits into that mold of like being the four, like the you know, the probably not the number one because they have Devontae, but if they trade Devontae, he could be the number one option in the offense in literally year one. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, you know, with with already having Darren Waller, I was like, let's take the upside swing, grab Meyer, be good to go with two. Um, so that we can just grab a few more extra running backs because we didn't grab, you know, we, or grab, we grabbed our second one in what round ten, um, and you know, grab a, another upside wide receiver to finish out the build. It's such a good point. I think allowing giving the Tua fall to us was really nice, and then the Meyer pick here. I think we can debate till the cows come home. Kendra versus right, Kendra versus Devin Singletary and Ty J versus Jeff Wilson and DPJ versus Pierce and all that kind of stuff. But what allowed us the flexibility to kind of dip our toes in and out of these running backs and wide receivers and take our swings there is the fact that we got two rock solid quarterbacks without reaching for anything or without, you know, spending a third and a fourth round pick on them. And then we got two really good, uh, both high upside and, in my opinion, high floor, assuming health, tight ends that we can rely upon. So we only use four total roster spots at those two positions. And now we can use these home – look, and like let's be frank, all these guys are home run swings at the end here. Like Kendra's a home run swing. Tajay's a home run swing. But that's just what happens when you get to the late part of the draft. You tell me, like there's Khalil Shakir. Like is that anything but a home run swing? Like these guys are home – Devin Duvernay went in the <laughs> went in the 15th round or whatever. These guys are all home run swings. So we want to use them on the spots that I didn't know that Devin Duvernay went there, by the way. And that was the first, I just so happened to see his name. That's pretty wild. That's the luxury the, the, number two. That's our buddy. That's our buddy. <laughs> yeah. That's our buddy picking, picking second. But uh, like the, the, I, I want to use, if at all possible, I'm not against three, tight ends or three quarterbacks but like if 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 we can do it and only have two of each of those positions and use these home run swings to try to hit an actual home run like a, like you know find eli mitchell find c path the year he went out find p Ryan from last year like that shit wins you a million dollars i'm not saying that the third quarterback can't help you get there and all that kind of stuff but like Get P. Ryan without Mixon, right, <laughs> on that team. Get Samir, as we'll get to in a second, without Josh Jacobs. Those guys win you a million dollars, like, really, really easily. And we are a little thin at running back, right? So we get through Michael Meyer. I think that was a really important note that you mentioned there. And this is where it gets a little bit fun. This is where um, we probably had our biggest debate of the whole <laughs> of the whole draft, I think. The Kadarius Tony, and uh, so hopefully this doesn't go as poorly as Kadarius Tony has so far. Uh, and, and Zamir White were certainly our, our biggest debates. We come back on the clock here in the 17th round, and quite frankly, it's like totally wide open. I think just about anybody that's left in the player pool is available to us here. I, I didn't consider anything um, like, a, a, like, you know, like the Taije thing, like, oh, this is the I, – I guess I don't want to say that because I do think Zamir's a little bit at the end of a, of a tier, but, like, that's really, um, you know, probably a little bit of a reach saying that, whereas wide receiver – I don't know. They're all, they're kind of all the same. I do like Taekwon. We just talked about not needing quarterback and tight end. So we debated for a lot and a long time about uh, Zamir White 
And um, Bernie, what were your just like general thoughts on him or, or going elsewhere? Or what, what were you, you kind of, what are you thinking here? And then what's like, has been your like late round kind of thought process for this team? So coming into this pick, we're at a two, six, six, two. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with our six running backs. Honestly, going to this pick, it's better than the six for seven running backs I usually have on DraftKings. <laughs> um, so, like, that's pretty exciting. We do end up going with Zamir, and I end up being okay with Zamir. The two players I actually have ahead of Zamir at the 17th round pick are still on the board for us, and we're one pick away in the 18th round. Those two players are Isaiah Likely and Jalen Hyatt. They kind of fit with what Eric was just talking about with that home run swings. Isaiah likely is probably the last tight end that I'll pitch on this team just because of Hicks, his contingent upside. He fits against our Miami stack. Um, so every time he's on the board and he hasn't went yet and we're up, I'm going to keep pitching him. <laughs> but Jalen Hyatt also, to me, makes a lot of sense. I like to get into that New York Giants and Rams game late in drafts. Trev? Yeah, uh, I think this is really the like training camp hype range where all these guys are going to go <laughs> up and down the boards on every report. You know, we're gonna wait, you're going to pound the table for Lavisca? I'm going to yeah. pound the table for Richie James right here. I mean, <laughs> that it just he's one report away from being like a 12th round pick all of a sudden because Sky Moore got sick and now he's in the slot. Like, <laughs> so I think all these guys are it's based off like your preference. Um, so with the Zamir pick, you know, we talked that over already. Um, my other guys there, I liked Likely. Uh, and then Richie James is my second and Hyatt, like all those guys where you can easily like paint a picture where they can get on the field and they can actually be productive. You know, we saw Richie James had that stretch last year. Uh, Hyatt was in the weird Tennessee offense, but he won the Bolitnikov, right? And just was a sick ass deep threat so it's like in the sec and the sec i know he's kind of one-dimensional but it's still goddamn impressive to win the bullet in the cough in the sec yeah like he's not he's not a bad you don't do that and just you're absolute dog well like it just he's probably pretty decent at least at his one trick you know mm -hmm. so you you can make you a can case table find that trick right <laughs> yep, yep. So I think here, you know, you can make a case for any of those guys. And so after, I, th I think Zamir was the best pick for us because I'm personally, like, with our running back room, I think it's about as elite as we could have gotten for our structure. And now we can just go and pick through these receivers and see, okay, what situations do we think could open up where they can get on the field, they can actually be productive, like, make a difference for our team and just try to actually hit home runs with these last guys. Silas? Yeah, so, I mean, and eventually we went Zamir White solely because I think he is the last of a tier, right? Like, Josh Jacobs has a, has a legit chance to literally hold out. If he doesn't hold out, like, he could fake an injury late in the year or just nurse an injury late in the year, and Zamir becomes your hammer. Um, he could be a three down back with how Josh McDaniels works. I mean, obviously he still has uh, Amir Abdullah and Brandon Bolden, who for whatever reason he still has on the roster. Um <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, Zamir White's pretty damn good. Um, you know, they, they did draft him pretty early last year. Um, he didn't really see the field because Josh Jacobs was obviously exploding. Um, but if someone's going to step into the Josh Jacobs role, it, they, they thought it was going to be him. If Josh Jacobs didn't explode last year, he wouldn't have been tagged. Right. And then Zamir White would be, uh, would be their day one starter. Um, the other running backs, I really don't see that. They really need injuries. Um, we don't need an injury. We just need a continued holdout. Um, I didn't – I personally love Jalen Hyatt. I just didn't really see how he made sense from a team perspective. Um, I was pushing for Richie James just because it seems like he's going to be on the field in the Chiefs offense. And I'm kind of looking at offenses, right, um, at this late in the draft. I think the Chiefs are, you know, the best – or one of, if not the best offense in the NFL and anyone who's playing – taking snaps – um, is, is pretty valuable. Um, I, I was interested in likely because he's a bring back off uh, Tyreek and Tua, uh, but kind of for my, my points I brought up for Meyer, like I don't necessarily think we need to grab a tight end because I feel pretty safe there. Um, with Zamir, we're, we're pretty solid at running back, you know, kind of moving forward. We're, we're probably looking at maybe a running back and a couple of wide receivers to round it out. Um, but I was really trying to push that 2882 build or 2792 build. 
That's exactly what I was. I, I agree with you guys on the Zamir thing. And then ultimately we talked through this a lot that the thing with Zamir is I, I, I don't think there's ever really a scenario in which, you know, we get even, even with the Jacob stuff where Zamir is, you know, 100% snap player or whatever. But I, I think you shouldn't go into it thinking that's the only thing I I'm going to be targeting here in these late rounds, right. Is finding the next guy who is the next CMC or whatever. He doesn't really profile as an every down back, mainly because of the receiving type stuff. He has never really done that, but he's, he's really talented. He was the number one running back in his high school class. I know that that's kind of like a funny bit now. It's been many years ago, right? And there's a lot of guys who are top running backs in their class that don't necessarily pan out in the NFL, but right. Big time five-star prospect goes to Georgia, but he tore his ACL before he got there. He, he's actually torn his ACL twice. And so that's part of what has caused the issues. But like, well, A, we just talked about how ACLs apparently don't matter. Um, week seven, week 17 matters, but ACLs do not matter. And he's been nothing but product. He was, he was awesome at Georgia and he didn't put up monster, like raw numbers, but no one, James Cook didn't do it at Georgia either. They, they, they play three, four, five running backs at Georgia. They just run people in their defense is amazing. I mean, ha, the whole, their whole damn starting defense is going to be like starting on the Eagles this, <laughs> this year. It's the, you know, it's the, the Philadelphia Bulldogs. Now that Georgia is just an awesome program. And I think there's a very real scenario in which a lot of different things can swing his way. And when we're talking about home run swings, I want to take the, the, the one that like, I want to shoot for the short porch, right? If you're going to try to hit a home run, let's go to Yankee stadium and swing for the short porch out in right field. Let's not go out to San Francisco and try to hit it into fucking, you know, the ocean out there. Let's, let's, let's take the easiest one we have. You'd mentioned Josh Jacobs. I'm not saying Josh Jacobs is going to hold out. He doesn't have leverage. I understand all that, but it's, in the realm of possibility that Josh Jacobs just says, fuck you. You just rode me into the ground last year. I, you're pay me or I'm not coming back. Devonte Adams. I, I'm not, I don't know if these rumors are true. It's from a talking head on Fox sports or whatever, but it's already talking about like, he's saying just wait, Devonte is going to get traded. Right. And I kind of have already thought that that was possible. Jimmy Garoppolo is their quarterback. Certainly not a picture of health. Certainly don't know if he's good outside of a Kyle Shanahan system because he's never really been. We, we, we don't know. I'm very worried about the Raiders this year. It could all go to shit. And as you said, Josh Jacobs could not hold out and we get to week 10 and they're two and eight. Is Josh Jacobs going to play through some tweaks went without a contract, you know, for a two and eight team in, in the Raiders? I don't think so. And all of a sudden now you have Zamir White. There's just so many pads to him getting there that I agree that he was kind of that cut off. We have the, now we have a little mini cheap Raiders thing. Like imagine getting to week 17 and there's no Devonte Adams and there's no Josh Jacobs on the Raiders and you're playing the Colts in the dome and you got both of those guys. That's like, that's the dream. Right. And so I just really like how it all fell together for us. Um, I think Zamir ultimately just kind of made too, too much sense. And me stubbornly, which I was hoping uh crease would uh, make his pick here. We could get to it. Um, but we can kind of talk through really quickly what we're thinking about uh, in the 18th round. I have so many of these late round guys that I want to target that Zamir just made sense to slot in there. And then we can talk through how we want to handle some of these late round wide receivers and or late round running backs. And I have, as you see, Jalen Hyatt is definitely in that group for, for me. We do have Darren Waller. So we've already made a little bet on the Giants and we have access to Rams later if we want to in 2-2 if people want to pound the table for Puka right or Kyron or something like that but we have Rams and Giants available to us and we have Waller already uh and then I we have Justin Fields and I will admittedly be pounding the table for one Tyler Scott uh he is I'm not saying we have to pick him here but I'm saying thinking about the Zamir thing why he made sense is so Hyatt might be available to us here I really love Tutu, who goes with Waller as well. I really love Tyler Scott, who goes with well, – I would like to get a stacking partner with Justin Fields, if at all possible. And that's just like a couple of those guys, right? You guys have mentioned Richie James. Josh Downs is another guy that we talk – we have two Raiders. We like Josh Downs. We could use another uh, young kind of upside swing wide receiver. And then on the Colts, I also have pitched uh, – Evan Hall, who is uh, going to be my new last round running back du jour because JT is not practicing. And Evan Hall, who's actually like a really interesting prospect, um, he feels like a better Isaiah Pacheco to me, actually, where he's a freak athlete. Sub 4440, 
big, strong dude, went to Northwestern, who, in case you've been following the news, is a fucking epic disaster of a football program. And they were horrid on offense. And he carried it. He did everything. And he was actually good, like really good it, on the worst team in the Big Ten. Um, but he was, he's been the running back one. He's been running with the ones with Jonathan Taylor out. And so, like, we just have all those guys that I know that they're, like, flyers and 20th round guys. But you, I have, like, four or five, six guys that I really want to target here in these late rounds. And I'm sure you guys do, too. So, ultimately, that's why I think some of these other guys that we picked made sense. Let's really quickly, though, I'll go to Silas first. Uh, and I know, Bernie, you got to get out of here in a few minutes. Um, let's just talk really quickly about this 18th round pick and who you think stands out to you and how we want to start to structure these last couple guys. Yeah. So obviously we were talking about Jalen Hyatt last round. Um, you know, he's kind of a special talent can obviously offer like significant single game upside with what he's really good at. Um, but also I'm kind of going to be pounding the table for the other bear in chase Claypool. Like they treated a first round pick for the guy essentially. Right. They can't not let him play, even if later in the season, like he might lose his spot if he continues to play like dog crap. Um, but they did bring in DJ Moore. Uh, Darnell Moody should be healthy this year. You know, that does prove that there's going to be target competition, but it also opens up Chase Claypool to be that deep threat where they just throw the ball up and Chase Claypool comes down for, you know, eight to 10 touchdowns. Um, so not out, out of the realm of possibility. I'd say he's probably the most talented wide receiver, maybe besides Allen Robinson, but he's kind of getting old, um, you know, of who's left. It's just, can he play at a consistent rate? Trev? I'm kind of, I'm kind of with Silas on the Claypool talk, at least for a Chicago receiver. I think I might still like Richie James more, just if he gets that chance to get on the field, you know, anyone on the Chiefs who's starting or playing like 60% of the snaps even, like they can just go absolutely wild. Um, but we've seen Claypool be good in the past. In his rookie year, he was pretty good. And then he was with mm -hmm. Roethlisberger. And then he got he got traded mid-year and didn't do much, which is almost expected. And he's getting, I feel like he's getting docked really hard for that. If instead he had continued his pace with the Steelers and then gone trade to the Bears in the off season, I think he'd probably be going a few rounds earlier just because people would, people would be hyped. But, you know, I, I don't know all the intricacies, but it's probably not easy, you know, moving and then learning a whole new playbook. The offense was pretty terrible despite Justin Fields, you know, running all over everyone. So I think Claypool having a bounce back and maybe not even being absolutely elite, but just being a big body on the team, you know, playing almost every snap, he could do pretty well if the offense just takes a step forward. What do you think, Bernie? So I had one thing real quick. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, you know, the, the Bears have taken a significant inclusion in actually adding to their offensive line, which was absolutely horrid last year, which is why Fields had to run everywhere. If he can actually sit back in the pocket, it allows Clay's Chay Pool to get open a little bit more. Bernie? I definitely want one of the Bears wide receivers on this team. If that's Claypool, if that's Tyler Scott, I think we're in a range here and needing two, maybe three receivers, they make sense. Um, one other thing that was a really interesting point for Zamir White and how we got here. Also, we don't need to win a 1,400-person final here. This is a much smaller final, easier advance rates, and that's why I think shooting for the moon, like maybe with more wide receivers, isn't as needed. Maybe that's why Isaiah likely doesn't make sense here and why we kind of maybe ta might target two, three wide receivers and a running back and stick with like a two, eight, eight, two yep. or something like that. We just don't need the absolute max in week 17. We need to be good. And maybe one of these last four rounds guys counts for us in week 17. And we just got to fit the right position. Um, I would lean Hyatt here. I know there's some reservations on the offense, things like that then come back around and get a bear later on. I'm hesitant on Richie James. Honestly, there's so many mouths to feed. It's we're really coming down. Is it week 17? Hopefully he doesn't count anywhere before that. If he's starting to count in week 13 and stuff, that means our top three round picks have failed us. And we don't really want Richie James to be counting for us early on. 
I was I was drafting a good clip of of Richie James like at the beginning of of the draft cycle and stuff. Just in, I mean, he was really good last year. Um, quite frankly, yeah, for the Giants, he was he was, he, he was really really good. And so, but the bet then was we have no idea what the roles for these guys are. He was really good last year. Maybe he's their slot receiver, right? He's the Juju that they right they brought in Juju last year to play this slot role. Juju sucks, but like it, it could be just Richie James could be the new Juju. Um, it does appear that they're trying to make that Scott, Scott give Sky the slot job. They basically said as much yeah. um, that Sky's the starting slot receiver, at least as of now. Of course, things could change. He could just suck, and Richie could take that job over. But I think we just have some alternatives here, particularly with the Bears, with Hyatt, with some other running backs, with uh, Downs, who makes sense with our Raiders. There's just a lot of options that make sense for this particular team, as opposed to – like if. If they had not named Sky like the starting slot guy already, like Richie James is not going to play outside. It's going even without yeah. Tony, it's going to be MVS and Rushy Rice and Justin Ross. Uh, I guess could be in the conversation for one of our late round wide receivers, right? Justin Watson. We all thought it was going to be all these other guys last year, and fucking Justin Watson's playing <laughs> sixty snaps a week, right? Like, uh, th- there's just so many guys as as Bernie mentioned that. If we had like Mahomes or something like that and we didn't have Sky, I'd be like, yeah, dude, let's do it. You know, or if we had Burrow, which that would really suck if we had Burrow given uh, the, he just got hurt today. But um, I just think that the other wide receivers make a ton of sense. I'm going to end up you guys. I'll, I'll be honest with you. You've sold me on Claypool. I also went back and kind of you know, did a little game log thing. And my God, the, the inefficiency was is like sickening to go look at to look at. Uh, <laughs> he drew a lot of targets, but uh, it was not a lot of production. But I, I think it's okay to uh, write that off, as you guys said. I mean, at this price, I mean, we're talking 18th, 19th, 20th round at this price. I, I'll probably end up pushing for both Bears uh, wide receivers, actually, in this. Um, Clay, like Claypool here. And then um, Tyler Scott maybe in the 20th or something. But we'll we'll, we'll get there when, when we get there. And I know Bernie's got to go. I think we all probably got to go. Um, we'll be back on the clock shortly and we'll get to our 18th, 19th, and hopefully 20th round picks here within the next day or two. And we'll kind of review this team and where we stand. I will just, anybody got anything else to add before we get out of here? Let's win. All this. right. Yeah, let's win this. I'm excited. Yes, I get, I get, I get way too excited for the last round guys. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's this time of year, you know, I'm hyped on Evan Hall all of a sudden, like most people don't know who the fuck Evan Hall is. And I'm like getting excited to draft him, but I am excited to finish this team up, land this plane and take our shot at um, a million bucks. So we'll be back in just a couple of days, 18th, 19th and 20th rounds in the DraftKings $555 milli. We'll see you guys. Peace. Those were some spicy takes. Want to stay up to date with all of the other spicy takes we're going to have over here at Spike Week? Why don't you press that subscribe button below? You turn notifications on, we draft a team, boom, you know about it. We have another spicy take, boom, you know about it. You can be there. You can draft with us. You want to stay up to date? That's how you do it. All right, we'll catch you later next time here at Spike Week. Spike Week.